They began arriving in Missouri on a Wednesday in October. Some had not been back to Woodstock since graduation in 1967. They arrived from Washington and Florida, from Missouri and Maine, from Ohio and Minnesota, and from India and Afghanistan. They came back to revisit the mountains that had touched their lives in so many ways. They came back to follow once again those donkey trails that had become routine years ago. They came back to experience what is new in Woodstock School, as well as what is new in each other. They came back to remember times both happy and sad, both ordinary and life-changing. They came back to remember. For their short reunion, the Hennefeld Center became home. Built where Ashton Court once stood, the Hennepin Center is Woodstock School's new outdoor and environmental study center. It is located on Terry Road, a half mile beyond the school where Marge Groff used to live. That first afternoon and evening, there was a time to visit and catch up. The next morning, everyone was up for a leisurely walk around the Chucker. Once up at the top of the hill, they walked through Sisters of Bazaar. Around several bins in the road, Catalog Church appeared, across the street from where Beth Ann lived. There was ample time to stop to take pictures of the snows. They took photographs also of the lovely flowers and ferns cropping out of the Pushta walls. They passed Landar Community Cemetery where Dale's grandfather is buried. Earlier, Margot, Sally, and Max had walked to the grave of Margot's baby brother and the place where her father's ashes had been buried, so she could scatter some of her mother's ashes there too. Just the day before, Woodstock principal Bob Alter's ashes had been buried by his family. As they walked along, they tried to remember who had lived where. Some thought that Mary Ellen's family had lived here. Rounding the bend to Chardacon, which literally means four stores, Barbie and Peter offered to buy a round of tea. Mm -hmm. Never, never have seen a patient. So you get these interactions that you're trained. No, none of them. Hey! 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 H
Yeah. Really? Yeah, because he, he drank the whole bottle of vinegar. Oh, wow. That's what he do it. Yeah. Take this. And the guy says, no, 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 I'll take it. He says, well, if you insist. <laughs> Next, they pass the newly renovated St. Paul's Church and a little further along, Rokeby Manor which was the Methodist guest house at one time, and now is a first-class hotel complete with restaurant, hair salon, gift shop, and garden. On the way down to Woodstock, they passed the Norrish block built by Barbie's father and the place where they lived on the hillside. Back on campus, they just had to stop for a picture on Jacob's Ladder and another one in front of the Woodstock School sign. After a quick lunch in the staff dining room where Gordy and his daughter joined the group, Emu from the alumni office gave a tour of the campus. They visited some of the grade school classrooms. Long Dorm for Girls is now the grade school library and learning center. Music practice rooms now fill the area where the indoor quad gym had been. They noticed a greater emphasis on Indian music. The covered ramp is just the same. There are now computers in the library where Sue Scott Swanson recently served as librarian. Parker Hall is still Parker Hall. But outside, the communication and arts building make things look quite different. One of the biggest changes is atop the upper covered ramp. As they witness the new Winmumbe Gymnasium, one of the best high school gymnasiums in all of India. Hey. Historical pictures of former athletes line the walls heading to the changing rooms. Oh, look at the boomers. I remember those. They recognize some of the best of them. New on the campus security force are some Lungur monkeys trained to scare off the more aggressive rhesus monkeys, which have become quite a menace to students and staff. That evening, they were all invited to the principal's house for dinner. In their minds, of course, it was the home of the Burgoynes, but now houses Dr. and Mrs. Long, who only recently moved to Missouri to head up the school. Friday morning, those who chose to walk the seven miles from Siokoli to the Uglar River were off a couple of hours in advance of those taking the new motor road down to the Uglar Valley. <laughs> the hikers passed villages where farmers were at work. For some, the walk brought back memories of this starting off route for hikes to Devosari, Nagtimba, Lurtsu, Drasu, Uttarkashi, and beyond. For others, it was a first time delightful seven mile downhill walk. Once down the Uglar, the hikers met up with the rest of the group. The tour used to be the tea stall and post office where you waded across the Uglar River while balancing a heavy pack on your back. With the advent of the motor road and the bridge, Tatur has become quite a bustling town. From Tatur, they climbed higher and higher into the mountains on the new motor road. They stopped at the Gati school, where to their delight, the children performed some of their traditional village dances. From the Gati school, it was on to experience a typical small picturesque mountain village. Kaskadan is a subsistence farming community which until the recent advent of the motor road was isolated. It is a beautiful sight as they proudly display 
their colorful corn crop. The village faces two new problems. Their young are abandoning farming to find jobs in the cities of Missouri, Derdun, and beyond. On an earlier trip, the headman of the village had told Max Marble about the village's other new problem. Speaking in Hindi, he told of their new problem by frequently repeating two easily distinguishable English words. Global warming. He did not know how they would survive with the reduced winter snow in the high mountains causing less and less moisture for their corn and other crops. Saturday morning, they were off to Happy Valley to visit the Tibetan school and the place where the Dalai Lama lived when he first escaped from Tibet. While being served tea, they learned about the school, which started soon after the takeover of Tibet by the Chinese. In their boarding school, Tibetan orphans are raised in a very nurturing and loving environment. They make their own uniforms. They learn various trades, like that of painting traditional Tibetan art. It was a short and joyful visit. Rather than ride all the way back to the Hennevo Center, some chose to walk back through the bazaar. On Sunday morning, the group headed off in different directions. Some attended the newly renovated St. Paul's Church up on the Chukar. It just so happened that Sunday was also Worldwide Woodstock Day. That evening they attended the outdoor Worldwide Woodstock School festivities just up from the school at Edge Hill. Now you've come to Woodstock <laughs> and you know it's true. There was great food fun music, and a fire by which to keep warm. All too soon, Monday morning rolled around, and it was time to say farewell to the mountains once again, and to bring the 45th Zambitsa Class Reunion to a close. Group opinion held that the upcoming 50th Zambitsa Reunion in 2017 should be held somewhere in the United States, to enable the greatest participation. However, calls for having another reunion at Woodstock some other time in the near future were clearly heard. <laughs>